What's up everyone, I'm Nick. In this video, we're gonna talk about colors. Now, if you've used SwiftUI before, you probably already know how to add the basic colors to a screen. SwiftUI comes by default with the basic colors like color.red, blue, orange, green, whatever. But these are just the basic colors and they don't always look the best in real apps. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can adapt pretty much any color in the world and get it into our SwiftUI code. So I'll first show you guys how we can use these basic colors like red, green, and blue, but then we'll get a little more advanced. I'll show you guys how we can adapt UIKit colors into our Swift UI code. And that's because UIKit has a bunch of additional colors that are really useful, like the iPhone system background. And then I'll show you guys how we can use color literals to literally open up a color palette in Xcode so that we can access any color in the world. We can even add our own hex codes into that color palette so that we get the exact color that our designers want us to use. And then I'll wrap up this video by showing you guys how we can make colors adaptive so that they actually change between light and dark mode. Okay, so I am back in our Xcode project that we made a couple videos ago. And let's create a new file again for all the code that we're gonna do in this video. So let's right click on the navigator on the left side. Let's create a new file. Again, this will be a Swift UI view and we're gonna cover colors. So let's call this colors bootcamp. Hit create and let's open up our file. Let's hit resume on that top right corner to get the preview all connected. And since we're covering colors in this video, I'm gonna add a shape to our screen so that we can change the color of that shape. So let's add a rounded rectangle. We did this in the last video and let's give it a corner radius of maybe 25. Let's also set the frame of this. Let's do a width of uh, 300, a height of 200. And we don't need the alignment, so I will delete it. And as you could have guessed, we can use pretty much any color you could possibly think of. So let's start by before the frame, I'm going to add a fill. And let's add by default, it comes with color. Let's do color dot red. So this color is the Swift UI color scheme, and it has a bunch of preloaded colors for us to use just like color red. So we don't actually need to go get the like hex value of this color. We can just use dot red. So when we click this period, if we go past all of these inits down to these variables, which are highlighted with the green V here, we can see all of these colors that are preloaded in for us to use. And these are basic colors and they're great for developing purposes. But as you develop an actual app in the app store, you're probably going to want to use some custom colors and we're going to get into that in a second. But for now, we can just use these basic colors. So let's click the purple one and we can see that it turns purple here. If we right click on this purple and jump to definition, we can also see in the developer documentation, all of these colors listed out for us. So clear, black, white, and you'll notice down at the bottom are primary and secondary. Now these are probably the two most important colors on this. And I'm going to show you why right now. So if we hit that back button to the top left there and we come back here and we change this to dot primary. So in when your iPhone is in light mode, primary is basically a black color. It's the normal color of the font. But if we were to change this preview to dark mode, which I'm going to do right now, I'm going to I'm going to hit this inspect preview. And we're going to do a tutorial course on dark mode later, but I just want to show you guys. Uh, and then we change the scheme from inherited down to dark. You'll notice that the fill color is still primary, but it's actually white now. And that's because the primary color changed between the light and the dark mode. And you'll find that a lot of time when you have text in your app, you're going to want to set it to color primary so that the text is readable on the light on the white and the dark backgrounds. But for now, let's change this back to light mode. Let's go back to inherited. And let's look at a couple other colors. 
So I'm gonna make this fill multiple lines so that we can start changing out this color here. So I'm gonna hit enter before the color and then I'm hit enter again after the color. And now we can just comment out this line here. And still within our fill, I'm gonna add another color. So I'm gonna call it color. And this time I'm gonna open the parentheses and I'm gonna go down to an option that's called color literal. And this is this you can use in UI Kit as well as Swift UI, and it is super convenient. So let's double click on that and let's close the parentheses. So now instead of having dot primary, dot white, dot purple like we did before, we actually have a picture of the color here. And what's super cool is that if I double click on that picture, I can then get this nice little uh, palette where I can start changing the colors. And if I double click it again and click other, we can then get into all of our super customizable colors. So here we have the crayons, which we can change around. We can change the opacity of the crayons at the bottom. And we have a bunch of really important tabs here. We have the color wheel where you can get pretty much any color that you want. We have the sliders. So in these sliders, the most important thing to know is that if you click the RGB sliders, you can actually add a hex color here. So if you have a design team that want very specific colors, you can add those hex colors directly into here and the image will automatically update. There's also grayscale sliders if we want different kinds of gray. There's another tab here which has a bunch of like preset colors for us. These are web safe colors. These are all the crayon colors that we saw before. Uh, we also can do the developer colors. And we can do apple colors. And apple colors are like the basic colors that we saw before. The last tab here that we didn't click on yet is the spectrum. So a whole bunch of different ways that we can change whatever color we want and pretty much get any color we will ever need. So this is awesome. Let's just click on uh, the ocean for now. This is a nice color and X out. And you can see that the color icon updated perfectly. So when we're reviewing our code, when we have a color literal, it is perfect because we can just see without having to read anything exactly what color this is going to be. Now a couple other colors we can do. So let's comment out this line. So again, let's start typing color. Let's open the parentheses. And this time I want to go down to the completion here with a UI color. Let's hit enter. Now UI color is basically the same thing as color, except color is for Swift UI and UI color is for UI kit. Now, of course, this is a Swift UI course, so we're not using UI kit, but UI kit has some colors that are pretty handy and we can access those by simply calling UI color and then pressing the period. And just like when we called on the color and we did color.primary, color.red, we can call here UI color dot, and we can go down to all of these colors. Now, most of them are the same, except there's a couple extra ones that we don't have by default in the regular color. Now, the really handy colors from UI color that we can use are these system colors. So if I start typing system, not these system red ones and blue ones, but I want to find the ones that are down here, the system background, tertiary system background, secondary system background, and fill. These are the system colors that you'll find in apps, um, but they're like the default. So the system background is this exact same color as the background of the phone, which is pretty handy if you need to match something to the background exactly. One of the most important ones that I use here is secondary system background. And you'll see that this is like that very nice light gray that a lot of screens have where you can still use this as a background color, maybe instead of the white, but it's a nice gray. And, and you'll see as we develop some screens, how handy this could come in. So if I right click on this secondary system background, we can see some of these other colors. We can do system background, secondary, tertiary, system group, secondary system group, system fill, secondary system fill. So you'll play around with all of these, but all of these system colors are also gonna change with the light in the dark mode. So if I change our preview again to dark mode, 
you'll see that that nice light gray is now like a light dark gray, um, which is awesome because we didn't have to change the color and we're still supporting dark mode. So this is important. And the last thing I wanna show you guys is how to add color assets to your project. So let's leave this as it is for now. I'm gonna put the preview back to light mode. And let's jump into the assets.xc assets file on the left side here. So I mentioned a couple of videos ago in this assets file, we can upload all of the colors and images for our project that we want preloaded before the, uh, the app opens. And let's start adding some colors. So I'm gonna hit this plus sign at the bottom and I'm going to add a color set. Now let's rename this from just color. Let's call it uh, custom color. Hit enter. And while we're clicked on the custom color, we can see what color that exactly is going to be. And right now it's a white. But if I click on this any appearance here and I open the inspector on the right side, I'm gonna click on this attributes inspector and here we can actually change the color of our custom color. So again, we can click on the show color panel here and we can change our color to any of the colors that we went through before. So let's do uh, maybe blue. I also wanna point out that this input method we could change to 8-bit hexadecimal. And then we can type in our hex codes here if you had a design team that wants to use specific colors. But for right now, I'm going to leave this as floating point. And you're probably wondering why there are two colors here. And this is because we can customize this custom color to be different in light and dark mode. So right now, there's an appearance for any and appearance for dark. And that's because the appearances on the right side is set for any and dark. If we had this as none, when we call custom color, it will always be this blue in both light mode and in dark mode. But if we change this appearance to any and dark, then we can change it so that in dark mode, maybe it's a different color. So let's click on the dark mode. Let's change, let's show the color panel. And maybe in dark mode, let's make it this strawberry color. So in light mode, it should be blue. And in dark mode, it should be pink. And let's go test that out. And I want to point out that our color is called custom color with a capital C for custom and a capital C for color, because we're gonna have to type this into our code now. So let's go back into colors bootcamp. I'm gonna hide the inspector on the right side because we don't need it again. And let's comment out this color that we just worked on and let's add one more line. We're gonna call color, open the parentheses and this time we're gonna go down to the one with the name. Now it's looking for a string, so we can add a string by adding quotes. And within here, we want to call the name of our colors. So it's custom color. And now we have to click resume on the preview. And we should see, if everything was done correctly, that this box in light mode is that blue, which is awesome. And if we change our device, our preview, down to dark mode, the color will update automatically. So this is looking great. Uh, and before we leave this video, I just want to quickly touch on shadows. They're pretty simple to use, uh, but I, and I don't think I need a whole video on them. So basically on our rectangle here, after the frame, we can also call dot shadow. And then there are two completions here that we can use. And let's use the first one first, which just has a radius. And we can do maybe 10, get rid of this extra stuff. And now with just one line of code, we added a shadow around our entire rectangle, which is very useful and gives the UI like a nice professional feel. If we comment this out, we can also add a dot shadow and use the second completion, which has a color option. And instead of using a black shadow, we could call color dot red or whatever color we want here. And we can also change the radius. We can make it bigger or smaller. Let's leave it as 10. 
and we can change the x and y coordinates. So if we want the shadow to maybe be below our rectangle more than it is above, we can change the y coordinate. So let's do uh, 20 for y. And you'll see that the shadow moves down. We could also do negative 20 to move it up. And we can move it right by calling the x to 20 or negative 20. I find that most of the time the shadow should either be a, a degree of black or a degree of the actual color uh, that your shape is. So right now our shape is custom color. So I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna use that as the color. And then a shadow usually shouldn't be as strong of a color as the actual shape itself. Uh, so I'm gonna call dot opacity on this shadow and let's do maybe 0 0.3. So I'm gonna clean this up so you guys can see it better. So it's color, custom shadow, dot opacity, 0 0.3. And now you can see that we have a nice blue shadow behind our blue rectangle, which looks pretty natural. So that's it for this video. You guys now know how to add custom colors to your apps. You can do pretty much any color you could imagine. You can set colors to change for light and dark mode. And you guys can add shadows with custom colors uh, to your shapes and other elements. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking. And I will see you guys in the next video.